They were built off of this foundation. Amen. Uh, before we get, before I, 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 I quote Deuteronomy 1 8, this came to me during worship and that. Uh, but it, it's right at the end of the book of Jude, Jude right, which is right before Revelation. Right at the end of the book of Jude, there's only one chapter that says that there's a scripture that says, pulling them out of the fire. Mm-hmm. Pulling them out of the fire, and then yeah. prophetically speaking, there was a lot of words here today. Matthew 16, 18, I'm building a church, the gates of hell will not prevail against. Now, do you think that God's going to be, uh, do you think that that will be, uh, does God prepare us for the easy street? Or will there be some problems? Okay. So that we need to understand that if God's going to build a church at gates of hell without prevailing it, we're going to have to fight off one, two, three, four, five. We're going to have to fight off a few things and learn how to begin to exercise our faith. Okay, so I'm going to move a little faster. I'm not going to fully develop these. But in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8, Behold, behold I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, now the word possess, they're going to possess the land, it means to occupy and driving out by driving out the previous inhabitants. Okay, uh, the land, okay, so he says here that, that the land that he gave. I'm going to give you the land given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, you know, if you give someone a gift, you know, they say, okay, you give me this, give me this card, you give me $100, or whatever you give me, that's mine. Basically, what God has given them is a land that's now occupied by enemies. Yes. And the only way they're going to really possess the land is to cleanse the land of the enemies. So God says, you circle this mountain long enough. Rise up. How many times have we heard that prophecy? Rise up, Rise up and go in yes. and possess. And again, the word possess means to occupy by driving out the previous inhabitant. Here's, uh, here's what you'll, you'll learn as you go on. To have outward authority, you have to give God inward authority. Yeah. So yeah. basically, many people try to go possess the land out there. They've never given God the land within. <laughs> the mind, the will, the emotions, That's the true. body, the yeah. sense around, their yeah. attitude, the thoughts. Amen. Uh, yes. their, they, they're beating out people so that it makes someone ineffective are going out there and taking that because they won't let God take this. Okay, that's why this uh, that's where the whole thing of sanctification comes in. So here, uh, here's what I, here's uh, I said that to say that. So God said, well, give me this land. But what has been given is not automatically theirs without a battle. Now, some of you are facing that, okay? Yes. And uh, the fact that you're going through something, now remember, what we're going to be talking about is, my title tonight is Breaking Free from Bondage. When, and coming out of Egypt, and we're going to get there a little bit, okay? Coming out of Egypt, they're going through the promised land. That's why I shared that out of Jude, they're pulling them out of the fire. Okay, there's going to be some warfare, because you're going to find out the thief comes with the steel to kill and destroy. You get in position, and when hell itself begins to discern you're getting in position, you're coming alive, you're starting to hunger, thirst, and righteousness, then the enemy creates a uh, storm, distraction, disruption, all kinds of things, and we'll get that. I don't want to take too much time. Now, to prove what I, by the scripture, when I was turning to Deuteronomy 2.24, and this will this will elaborate, expound on what I was uh, saying, and that the land that has been given to you, has enemies in it. And so until we grow enough to be able to remove the enemies, and anybody beside me ever found any pride in... Oh, yes. Yeah, look in the mirror, didn't have to go... Nope. <laughs> Amen. Didn't yeah. have to go straight for the sin to find an attitude. Come on. Yeah. Now, in Deuteronomy 2.24, rise ye up, take your journey, and remember the journey. That, that basically God gives you a word, and that word there'll be an assignment. And when you say, yes, I'll come into alignment with the assignment, then the process begins. And that process is thousands of decisions, thousands of choices, thousands of crossroads that you have to make right decision. God said, I said before you, death and life, choose life so that you, you and your seed may live and may multiply. So there's the journey, yeah. I call it the process, that I live and into. And so we, we need to understand there's more than coming out of. If you understand what you've been called to, it's easy to leave the desert. It's easy to leave the land of barrenness from the land of fruitfulness if you understand what you've been called to. Because what you've been called to yes. is so much better than what we've been called out of. Amen. 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 
And some say in the beginning, you'd be called out of the world, but then also you'd be called out of dead religion. Yes. Amen. Okay, so rise up, take your journey, pass over the river Arden, which means a brawling stream. Behold, I've given, I've given to your hand, Sihon the Amorite, the king of Heshbon, and his land, begin to possess it. And here's what, here's what I'm trying to get across, okay? Begin to possess it, drive out the previous inhabitants, occupied by, drive out the previous inhabitants, begin to contend, begin to contend with him in battle. The word contend means begin to do warfare, engage the enemy, begin to fight the enemy. Amen. Now see, basically, as long as there's a, there's a contrast, there's hours of teaching just on the contrast of passivity and passion. Passivity, passive, uh, immobile, inactive, unmotivated, uninspired, just waiting for something to happen, but someone with passion is going to make something happen. Amen. Okay, so, basically, the enemy, Satan then, wants to paralyze us with uh, that we become immobile, we're waiting for something to happen rather than making something to happen. So he says, go in, possess the land. You've been where you are long enough spiritually. Go in, possess this land, and begin to contend in battle. Yes. This day I will put the dread of wow. you. Amen. See, Amen. the devil wants us to fear him. Said, yes. I feel that. Oh, the pastor, I'm scared of the devil. And when in reality, the devil's scared that we realize who we are in Amen. God. Amen. Okay, so he Amen. said, you begin this, and the, I'll put the dread of you and the fear of you upon the nations that are in the whole heaven, and shall hear, they shall, they're going to hear about you. They're going to hear about you. They shall hear about you. They shall tremble, which means shake, quiver. They shall, uh, it means quiver with violent emotion. They shall tremble, and they shall be angry because of you. When you realize the power in the name of Jesus Christ, and the Amen. Jesus Christ, Amen. you stop being afraid of the devil. Amen. You stop being afraid of your own shadow. Amen. You be very bold. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, let, me just, let me just quote this. When, when, um, when Moses had passed on, and uh, Joshua then comes, uh, said that Moses, Moses has passed on, and so God says to Joshua three times, be bold, be very strong, and be very courageous. Be bold, be strong, be very courageous. I'm telling you that God didn't put that in there for nothing. That's in there for a reason. Yes. On your journey out of and into, there'll be some battles. That, uh, and I'm telling you, there'll yes. be some hard days. Very and so when, when God says, yes. be very bold, be very strong, be very courageous, He's not yes. joking. He, I mean, God, yes. God not playing, the devil not playing. Yes. Okay, so yes. now let's turn to John chapter 2. and. I want to just pick up a little bit. Of, again, I want to I want to put in those contrast between passivity and passion, that uh, laziness of the zeal for God. Uh, I'm really I really love the the zeal for God. Okay, in, in uh, John chapter two, verse thirteen, and the Jews Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and Jesus found in the temple that there were selling oxen and sheep and doves, and the changers of the money city. So Jesus goes and he comes to the temple, comes to the house of God. And when he made this, so he finds them, they're, they're buying and selling. Uh, and uh, when they when he made this uh, scourge of small court, he drove them out of the temple, the sheep, the oxen, and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the table. He said, take these things from here. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Yeah. And the disciples remembered that it was written, zeal, zeal for your house, has eaten me up. Now there's a prophetic picture there of the condition of the church, and it became like a business. It became about buying and selling. Yeah. And Jesus said, "My house should be a house of prayer." Amen. And when He says that, when He when He tells the same story in Matthew, in Matthew 21 verses 12 through 15, He tells the same story, and He goes through that they begin to cast out the buyers and the sellers. Then He said, "Then the sick and the captive came, and they were healed. They were set free." They, when they got that buying and selling spirit out there, then they came back to healing the sick and delivering the candy. The point I want to make right there is that in the house of God, there was enemies. And they were buying and selling, and they come up up in the house of God, they become a house of merchandise, and he, he kicked out not only the sellers, but he also kicked out the buyers, okay? He got them all out of there, and then the sick began to come, they began to get healed, and then the captain began to come, and they began to get delivered. Amen. Okay, let's turn to Colossians chapter 1. Again, we're just kind of in. I want to give you a little, so what I call supporting scripture. Just that basically, this is the introduction to get where I really want to go. What you understand, there are certain things that happen on the journey. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 28, 
Whom we, uh, uh, start verse 27. To whom God will make known what, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery upon you, and the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Now here's the point I want to make, and, and we're going to, the reason I'm, I'm giving this foundation, because where we're going with my main text, you're going to understand while I'm sharing it, because there's going to be some warfare on your journey out of it in two. So verse 29 says, Wherefore also I labor. The word labor there means I toil, I work hard, uh, to the place that I feel fatigue and even pain and weariness. Wherefore I also I labor, striving according to his working with worketh in me mightily. Verse, uh, chapter 2 verse 1. For I would have you know what great conflict Conflict? Wait, was that me explaining any conflict? Yes. Yeah. I would have you know what great conflict I have for you. Conflict, the word fight, the word conflict in the Greek means uh, what great fighting, there's contention, there is a content I have for you for them that lay on the for as many as have not seen me in the flesh, and let's just get down to verse 3 and talk about Christ, in whom is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. How many want that? That's one of the inheritance that was prophesied to us tonight. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. There was in the house of God, the temple of God, the binding of the selling. And verse 11, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow at the righteousness. See, the, the, here's, here's what he's saying. It's, it's not just thou shalt not, there is the thou shalt. And when you come out of you begin to go into, when Amen. you begin to go into what God has for you, you be so free from what God calls you out of. Amen. Okay, so verse 11 says, But thou, O man of God, clean this thing, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, That's and right. being good. Fight! Good fight! Yes. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Lay hold of eternal life. Whereupon thou art also called, and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Uh, the point I want to make right there is says that, that there is a fight. Fight the good fight of faith. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 said, Be sober, which means be free from intoxicant. We can be drunk on religion. We can be drunk on ourselves. We can be drunk and intoxicated upon the world. Okay, so he said, be sober, be vigilant. The word vigilant be awake, be expected, be watchful. Do not be indifferent. It means to arouse from sleep. It means uh, to arouse from sleep, from sitting or lying down. It means to get, to get up from resting. And you heard the Spirit of God saying uh, Wednesday night and tonight about I'm raising up a church that gave the hill not prevail. Rise up, go in, and enter into the fullest of your inheritance. Okay, so the point I want to make here, be, be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, the devil is a boring line, walk around seeking who he may devour. Whom resists, resist that devil, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction is accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Okay, now let's go to, uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 5. And this will be, I was just trying to give you some support of scripture in Exodus chapter 5. And this is something that is very real to me. And uh, what I'm sharing with you now is like years, things that I went through in years that you don't have to take near that long to, to go through. Okay, to, to shorten the story here a little bit, the end, of, uh, the end of Exodus chapter 2, that's when the children side by reason of the bondage, the, the Hebrew children have been in slavery and bondage for 400 years. Well, when, at the end of chapter 2, they begin to cry out, they begin to cry out by... Uh, and side by reason of the bondage that when they begin to cry to God how long, how long before the deliverer come then on the other side, the back side of the desert God is preparing Moses he's going to connect the dot the people are crying out here God's preparing the, the he has the deliverer on the back side of the desert for 40 years waiting for the people when the people cry out then he gets Moses' attention by a burning bush and he begins to connect the two together and when people in bondage begin to cry out uh, by, and side by cry and cry by reason of the money, God will raise up deliver, and you may be the deliverer yeah. that God's raising up. There's young people in Amen. here that God's hands upon Amen. their life that right. go much yeah. further than me in, in ministry. Amen. Okay, so uh, chapter three, then the, 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 uh, the burning bush experience, God gets hold of the deliverer, and then Moses in chapter four, 
of Exodus, he begins to wrestle with the call. So he had one or two of you at the wrestle with the call. I'm not the only one speaking. I can't do this. I can't do that. And, and then finally God just really, uh, what I call, God gives him what I call a Holy Ghost slap. <laughs> just slaps it. I believe I love it. And he awakens Moses that is willing to answer the call. Now everything, Moses, 80 years old at this time, 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in the backside of the desert, and now God awakens him and gets him and gives him this burning bush experience, and then all the failure, all the unbelief, all the fear, everything that was in him, all the hurts and the wounded, he killed a man, he felt like a failure, and he had to work through all these things that Moses had to work through, and God, every objection that Moses came up with, then God began to overcome it because God is raising up a deliverer. That's a picture of the remnant, okay? Because God is raising up a remnant that's willing to leave the comfort where he was. He's on the backside of the desert. He's married. He's got children. He's a shepherd. He has safety. He's provided for. He's protected. He's defended. He, everything going real good for Moses until he looks up one day and sees this bush burning. And he knows if he turns aside to see this great bush that God would, will deal with him. Yes. Now, everything that Moses had went through, 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in the backside of the desert, all the objections that Moses had, to him, if I look at this, I know, I know that bush may be for other people, but God, I failed, I killed somebody. You haven't done that. So Moses, Moses knew, if I, if I look at this bush, and this could change my life forever. So many times there are people, there are people that are backslide, and, and uh, you, you, you know they're backslide, you know they're on the way to hell, and, and you invite them to the church today. No, 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 I'm not coming that bush. Because yeah. I'll come there, God will forgive me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not willing to give up my idol just now. So then if they come, if I get too close to that bush, if I get too close to you, if I get too close to the church, the mercy of God, the love of God, the power of God, the Spirit of God will draw me. I'm not ready to give up my idol just yet. Amen. No, 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 I don't want to, I'm not ready to turn aside. If I, I don't want to go there. No, no, no. no. Lord have mercy. Now imagine, now see, everything, everything that Moses went through. All that he went through, and he answers the call, and he, he leaves where he is, and he comes all the way back to Egypt where he was a fugitive, where he killed a man. He was a one man. And he comes all the way back to Egypt. Wow, it's awesome. And he stayed before Pharaoh, which is a type of Satan, and Egypt is a type of the world, and he stayed before Pharaoh and he said, Let my people go! Amen! Amen. Yes, Amen. hallelujah. And the beginning of his mystery, I think, in ministry is, things go from bad to worse. Yes. Okay, now. <laughs> Now we're just That's talking about where some of us are living yes. right now, see? Because if you think every day going to be hunky dory, if you think every day going to be like a spring day, birds going to be tripping, fire moving up, that is just, it's not, it's not real. Hey, read your Holy Bible. You took nothing from the Bible. Okay? Okay, so in, in chapter 5, when he comes, and that's a, that's a chapter 5, afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God. <laughs> You ever, you just felt anointed? I, I felt like, ah, that's the of God, let my people go. And Moses, oh, everybody, everybody go get saved. Well, all right, I'm, I'm scared, I let him go. <laughs> let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is God? I don't know him. <laughs> Neither will I let Israel go down to verse 8. And Pharaoh commanded the same day, the test of the people of the officer say, you shall... You shall no more get the people straw to make great. Uh, let them go and gather the straw. So all, the, so they're they're yeah, building. See here, there's a prophetic picture. They're they're making these bricks with with mud and with straw, and they're building. They're building this this city for Pharaoh, building this city for yeah. the world. Mm. And see the same thing today. Yes. You have to understand that back in the days when they first started building factories, that they would put. Many of them understood exactly what was going on. People would go, they'd work in the factory, and they'd put honky dogs right next to the factory so the people would come out of the factory, go to the honky dogs, yeah. and they made slaves out of them. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. So they just, well, they did. They're building their city, they're building their buildings. Yeah. Come on, think they've gone. It is the, 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 basically, it's a picture of the world that the enemy will make slaves out of people, think that they're winning, and spend their whole life making money, then they kick the bucket. Yeah, that's right. What happened to the money and all the, yeah. all the toys that they bought throughout all the years? Yeah. So it's a prophetic picture. So that what Pharaoh, a type of Satan, says, okay, they're going to, listen, you think, 
you think let my let the people go on back on never never when I'm not gonna let them go. Number two, I don't know you're God. Number three, things are gonna go from bad to worse. Not only will they have to continue to make bricks, but they're gonna to have to go gather the straw to make the bricks with, yeah. which means their their work went their work went from hard to much harder. Yeah. Okay, so things they, Moses comes in, and I'm telling you, there'll be a time in your life if you don't understand yeah, that. Because, see, you've got to be real. Yeah. Because everybody will be given an opportunity yes. to tuck their tail between their legs and yes. take their toys and go home. Yeah. But God's yeah. wasting them. Oh. Uh, when should just walk away when a warrior will be to overcome? Amen. The warrior will not back down. Yes. 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 If you were taught in the world, you would not say, oh, but I see they're hope for you. If you were really in the sport thing and you had, oh, my God, not only did we, we not only did we, oh, we played against opponent, we had rivalries. And the rivalries, we got real excited. You got to see that that was a rival and God looking for people. He's looking for people that went on the town at the drop of a hand. Amen. That got to fight it, okay? Amen, Jesus. Because there will be some days you think, ah, God, let my people go and things go from bad to worse. Yeah. Now the people, now the people is called to be the number of men at him. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Wendy, on you, you're so yeah. worth it. <laughs> now, who shall separate from the love of God? I'm no, telling you, no, you will be given an opportunity no. to be yes, called angry at God, angry at the church, yeah. angry at everything and everyone, and vomit out nothing but anger upon God's people. Yes. Amen. And thinking you're winning, yeah. thinking this is some right, but it's wrong. I'm yes. telling you. Amen. You know, we got to have, we got to have the grace to fulfill yeah. the true grace of Him. Love God and love His people. Amen. You will be given an opportunity to fool in the towel and blame someone Sunday for something. Yes. yes. No. But God's face said, God said, I'm building a church that gets you built. Amen. Let's pray again. Amen, Lord. Any wind can throw in the towel, yes. but not everybody can fight and kill giants. Yes. Come on, saints of God. Amen. There's an anointing that destroys them, the body. Amen. Hallelujah. What we're talking about now. Amen. We're talking about breaking free from bondage. Yes. Now we have to understand that. God is going to bring these people out. But you have to understand Moses the deliverer, a type of the prophetic church, that there are going to be days that things just don't look very well. I, be, I, be, I, left, oh my, I left the I left my family, I left my wife, I left my children out there, I left the comfort, I had beautiful seats, I had mountains to look at, I had food to eat, I had clothes to wear, I had water to drink, I had singing, I had provision, I had protection, and I left there to come here and be hated. Wow. Yeah, amen. That's true. Mm. Why don't you amen? Yeah. Amen. That's real. That's, that's so real. Yeah. So verse 9 says, Let there be more work laid upon the men. Since you've got energy, you want to go three days journey out in the, in the desert, let, spend your energy working harder. Yeah. And things go from bad to worse. And in verse 20, yeah. the people then, they bend Moses to them that uh, who stood in the way that came forth from Pharaoh and they said that the Lord look upon you and judge because you have made our, our, our situation to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of your servant to put a sword in their hand to kill it. And Moses returned to God and there may be, I've, I've been here now maybe one or two of you ever get there, maybe not, but, and Moses returned to God and said, God, how come that thou so evil be entreated this people? Why have you sent me? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's uh, it's been a while since. I'm not talking about the night, but it was, I don't know a week or two ago. God gave me a word for her, and I said, "No, you don't go by a word someone gives you, because right. this has got to be real within you." Yes. You got to know that God talking to you. Be God careful. Yeah. Don't just go with your prophecy because someone say go this way. Someone else yeah. will oh, prophesy yeah. go this way. Yeah. Someone just say prophet yeah. go that way. Someone yeah. say go this yeah. way. Someone yeah. go that way. You can go down there. Yeah. Everybody gonna be giving you a word. Yeah. What I'm telling you, you got to know in your knower. Amen. Or else, when the hard days come, yes. you'll be tempted. You hear what? Go in the town. Become angry, at God. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. got to know for yourself. It's not to be self. You yeah. got to die to the world. Amen. Amen. Amen, Lord. Amen. That is real. That is not a negative confession. Yeah. That is scripture. Yeah. There'll be some hard days, saints yeah. of God. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's true. Mm. Yeah. Let me, so that you understand. 
God will let you vent. Yes, you read right. the Psalms and uh, it, how okay. come how come the wicked prosper? How come how come they how come they're how come they're driving the Lincoln Continental and I got this <laughs> and I got the bus stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But then the psalmist said, But when I went to the house of God, then I understood, because it's about the power of the presence of God. Yeah. But on your journey out of an into, there'll be some days that you may question. That's why it has got to be settled within you. Yeah. Don't let, don't make decisions on, on a word of prophecy. It's got to ring in your spirit, man. Yeah. You got to know in your knower. Yes. Amen. You got to know. You got to know God for yourself. Yes. I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit as much as anybody in this city will also know. Human beings to try to help God out every now and then. Very true. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Verse 23, Moses, and for since I came to favor to speak in your name, he had done evil to these people, neither have you delivered the people at all. The first chapter in, in chapter five, but my people go. In one chapter they go from bad to worse. And then he's before God. Why did you call me? Why did you send me? Ah, you know, God, I was pretty comfortable over here. And I came here for you. And when I spoke your word, let my people go, I thought. <laughs> they'll go. <laughs> he knows why it takes so long. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's basically her message. That's exactly her precious mother. <laughs> that you got to understand this thing takes time. Yeah. And on your journey out of an in two, yes. you will yes. be given an opportunity to allow your circumstances the power to discourage you. Very or true. Yeah. you will get your eyes off of your circumstances. Yeah. You will not define yourself by your circumstances. You will look upon mm. God yes. 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 who has power over your circumstances. Yes. Yes. Because there will be an opportunity. Amen. See, if you don't discern, you don't you don't define yourself by your circumstances. Amen. Jesus found himself one day nailed to a cross. That's right. <laughs> if you don't understand this, think think of holy men of God, John the Baptist and Jeremiah. They threw in pits, miry pits. And if you had come along at that time, think of Joseph down in the pit. Mm -hmm. And see, if someone tried to define them by their circumstance, you are a failure, Joseph. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are a failure, Jeremiah, down in that miry clay. You are a failure, Paul, the apostle in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus did some clink time. Paul, the apostle, did some clink time. Yeah. Boy, you can't mm -hmm. be passive our church. You got. A little bit of record. Yeah. 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 You've got a rap sheet, man. Pretty long here. Yeah. You can't, God can't yeah. use you. Now, you never want to define that. Now, let me say something. You're going to have to know God for yourself. Because other people many times go look at your circumstances, and that's how they'll critique you, that's how they try to define you. Amen. But they don't know what God's doing inside that's of you. That's right. right. Amen. See, that's why I'm telling you. That's why I told her when the, when the word came to her the first time about being a prophetess, you don't go by that. You've got to go what's burning in you. Yeah. You've got yeah. to burn within you because yeah. something doesn't bear witness within yeah. you. That's true. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, now, hey, long because we're going somewhere. Chapter 7. Moses is scribing, he's belly aching, he's complaining. Why did you call me? Why did you send me? God, I came all the way here, and things have gone from bad to worse. And and Moses is questioning this thing, and God doesn't even pay attention to him. Here's what, chapter 7, verse 1. And God said to Moses, See, I've made you as a God to pray for. And Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I shall command you. And Aaron, thy brother, shall speak unto Pharaoh. And he shall send the children out of the out of this land. Verse verse four. Now, here, 
God's given Moses the deliverer some information. But Pharaoh would not hearken to you. See, but you and I got to understand, we're called the priest of the world, but the, there's going to be people not going to listen. Right. But, but see, God loves them enough, they've got to hear yeah. before they... Yeah. If they want to go down, but God's going to love them enough yeah. to give them an opportunity yeah. to get saved, to get right with God. And so they they were not going to listen to you. Amen. There are going to be people that will not listen to you, but you've got to be a voice crying in the Amen. wilderness. Amen. They will not want to hearken to you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth by, bring forth by armies. <laughs> bring forth by armies. Yeah. See, basically, they're in captivity, they're in slavery. They, they're not in military training. They have no spiritual training. They had, they're not even uh, able to have their Passover, the opera, the, the, their different feasts. They don't know they don't know warfare of the natural. They don't know warfare of the spiritual. And God says, I see the potential of this Amen. that people I've chosen to be my army. Amen. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty called, called the foolish thing in this world to confound the wise. Okay, awesome. so the, the verse 5, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt, the world, type of the world, and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them. Moses and Aaron still did, okay? They did what God commanded them to do. Now, that, that takes faith, okay? Okay, God, they're beginning to understand there are certain things here. Now, in uh, let's go to... Uh, okay, so now we're entering into another season. And then Moses and Aaron go in and, and again, and this is where he throws down the rod. The rod turns in and uh, cast out his rod and before it became a serpent. So we'll skip that. We're going to go down to verse 17. Now what is happening is because Pharaoh has said, Pharaoh made a choice. I'm not going to, I will not let these people go. So now the consequences of rebellion against sin, rebellion against God, against the commandment of God, begins, the mercy of God begins to operate. And the mercy of God begins to operate through the water turned the river and the water being turned into blood. Now, what a very important that you and I understand this. All that Pharaoh needed to do to save himself and all of Egypt, all the people of Egypt, a whole lot of trouble was confess and repent, turn from false God to the true God. That's all they needed to do. Let my people go. I do not know your God. And so he began the warfare. Here's, here's what here's where he got into real trouble. He began a power struggle God convinced he was going to win. That's right. yes. in his God. So the mercy of God, things could have happened real bad real quick, but God is doing little things again to begin to get his attention. Because the river, the Nile River was such a, a source of, of life for their for for the for their whole area, for their whole nation, so then the water begins to turn into the blood. So the mercy of that, you know, I think if the Missouri River turned to blood, <laughs> I think that would get my attention. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. See, it was a sign. Okay, so the, 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 the ten plagues, the, the water began to turn to blood. Now, as a result, the fish, great source of food, began to die. The fish began to die. Okay, so Pharaoh still doesn't confess. Pharaoh still doesn't repent. Still doesn't. They, he didn't allow that to get his attention, so God ups it just a little bit. So the whole nation's full of, filled with frogs. Frogs. Chapter 8. Frogs begin to fill the place. Pharaoh still doesn't confess. Pharaoh still doesn't repent. Who do you know? That's in great bondage that's mocking God, mocking you, mocking the church, mocking Christianity, mocking the Word of God, mocking the gifts, mocking deliverance. Who do you know? And the rebellion, rebellion as a sin of a trap, is bringing consequences upon themselves. The river turns to blood, frogs, then the dust turns into lice. <laughs> Lies everywhere. God is merciful, patient, waiting. All he did to do was confess, let the let other people go, confess, repent from all false idolatry. Say, oh, your God, Moses, is more powerful than my God. But he refused 
to humble himself. If he refused to have faith, he put it beside me, even after being saved, you were saved. You were genuinely saved. But you ever have a little power struggle with God who was going to really be in control? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I enjoy being saved, but I don't know about this you big Lord stuff. I don't want to lose control. That's right. And everything you tell me, I will run through this filter. Yeah. Yeah. You say I'm going to pray about it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think that if all the dust begin to turn to lice? <laughs> now remember, Moses is telling him ahead of time, here's what's going to happen. And he doesn't confess, he doesn't repent. Came down. So basically, now this is beginning. Now this is really what I want to talk about tonight, okay? Because some of us here are experiencing, you may not be experiencing, but there's, there's people that we know that are experiencing great warfare of coming out and going into. That's why I shared that God is building a church the gates of hell would not prevent against. Okay, he doesn't make warriors by putting them in a the lazy boy chair Amen, and putting the right. television in front of them and say, and say stay there for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. Pulling them out of the fire. That's why I shared this over. Yes. Wow. With great conflict, Paul, you said, with great conflict. We labored. Yes. We were striving. We were working hard. We were laboring oh. to get for your for your benefit. Yes. Yes. We were contending. We were fighting. We were yes. fighting the fight of faith. We yes. we had to we had we had to contend just to keep our faith level high enough right. so we could keep our own yeah. self about our own yeah. head above water yeah. so we could help other people keep their head above water. Right. Yes. A little bit of time goes by. Now there's another plague. Flies are everywhere. <laughs> Flies. Which many of you heard me say this over and over again. Frogs obey God. The lice obey God. Yeah. The flies obey God. Well, I obey God. Yes. I don't want a lice <laughs> to be more obedient. Yeah, I want to obey you. Can you imagine God saying to a fly, go there? <laughs> and God tells me, go apologize. I go, oh, hey, God. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's true. I'll think about it. Pastor Jane, I said this all the time. God's been looking down here seeing all this stuff going on. Praise God. Don't you think that that would begin to get Egypt, the world's attention? But the same thing is going on in our society today. Yes, yes, yes. One part there's flood, the other part there's drought. Mm -hmm. All kind of thing going on. There's war. There's all kind of thing going on. So then basically, this is the key, okay? Pharaoh then begin because here's here was the word of God. Very important we understand it. The word of God was, let my people go that we may go three days' journey, that we may sacrifice it to our God. The three day journey is the death, the burial, the resurrection. What it speaks of is separation. Yeah. Now Pharaoh, a type of Satan, begins to offer compromises. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Which is a strategy he uses up to this day. Now listen, we're going to look at the different compromises that Satan comes up with. The first one is in verse 25, after the flies, after the lice, after the frogs, after the water being turned to blood. So Pharaoh called for Moses, verse 25, in chapter 8, Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron said, Go ye sacrifice to the Lord God in the land. Yeah. Now, God had said, Go three day journey, yeah. separation, yeah. come out of Egypt and go out to the land that I'll show you. There's meant to be a separation between you and Egypt. Yes. Come out of it and go into. So Pharaoh comes up, a type of Satan comes up with a compromise. The compromise will be, you don't need to leave the world. That's right. You don't need to go to church to be a Christian. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Come on, how much oh, yes. yeah. people? I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I can I can pray at home, but yeah, I could, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not the reason. 
In First John it said, you know someone has passed from death to life because they love the brethren. Amen. When you love the brethren, you be fellowshipping with the brethren. Yes. You will be with the heathen out there. There's a separation Amen. that you come up from among them and you become a separate people. There's three day journey and Satan will offer people a compromise. You don't need to go to church. Come, sacrifice in the land. What he's saying is, I don't want to lose control of you. If you go to God's house, God will get a hold of you, and I won't be able to control you and manipulate you any longer. That's true. See, the world, now, now remember, this, this is my definition. There's the world, but then there's what I call the professional religious system of our day that's compromised. And the, the uh, what I call dead phony religion, worldly religion embraces everything while standing up against confronting nothing. In other words, their religion will say, you could be a practicing homosexual sexual, and still go to heaven. Right. You could be a practicing homosexual and still be a pastor. You could be a practicing homosexual and be a bishop within our denomination. Yep. That's religion. See, it doesn't, doesn't stand against uh, uh, anything. It just embraces everything. Drinking, drug, and fornicating, and you're still going to heaven. It's a life from the very pit of hell. Yeah. So there is a compromise that Satan will offer. And you will see many people will be will, will bite that forbidden fruit. And they will, they're looking for, uh, that's why did, uh, religion exists. Okay? Yes. The second compromise is in verse 27. So Moses had said, we will go three days journey to the wilderness, and we will sacrifice to the Lord our God, as God has commanded us. So Pharaoh then says, okay, I'll let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only don't go very far away. Don't go very far away because I don't want to lose control of you. Uh, stay in contact with texting. Stay in contact <laughs> with email. Oh, stay in yeah. contact yeah, on Facebook. Right. Keep calling one another. <laughs> wow. <laughs> don't go very far. Oh, yeah. Lord Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's real. Don't go very far. That's what you say. Don't go very far. Yeah, on the Facebook. Don't, don't become one of those Pentecostals now. See, don't die to yourself and experience resurrection life. Amen. Mm. Just go to some dead, meaningless ritual. That stirs up something. Oh, yes. Yeah. Another plague, which is boils. <laughs> In chapter 9, boils come. And uh, that would get my attention. Then, then you go a little bit further, and, and around verse 17, verse 18 to chapter 9, uh, another plague comes and hail. Now, let's put it this way, okay? You're going to see people, well, let, let, let's use Pharaoh. Pharaoh could have saved himself and his nation a whole lot of trouble. And you're going to see people power struggle God. And you're going to see them put plague after plague after plague after consequence after consequence upon themselves. And the mercy of God could have wiped them out from the yes. very beginning, but yes. they keep rebellion. Yes. The way God says, thou shalt and thou shalt not, he means it. Now, what we're going to see here, now remember now, God is going to bring these people out. Yes. And what I'm saying is, there's a great lack of cooperation in bringing the people out is taking a whole lot of more time and a whole lot of more effort. And there are some bad days and it has to be some patient on part on Moses' part. Moses being the deliverer, he has to understand, you know, when he went in, in Exodus chapter 5 and he said, let my people go, he thought, oh, okay, was this going to be, you know, God went before and everything. And I say, I say this, that they come out of there and we're all going to live happily ever after. We can close the Bible and go home, but that's not the way it works. Thank you, Jesus. And that's basically what it comes down to us. We need, God wants us to understand 
that on our journey, there's going to be some hard days. And if you don't understand the process, that's why I shared that back to you at the very beginning. There is a journey. Yeah. If you don't understand the journey, that coming out of and into and in between is the wilderness. And they wandered in that wilderness for 40 years. And see, there may, we may have a little bit of desert time in there, and people may look at you in your desert time and think you are a failure. What I'm saying is that you are being prepared by God. Amen. And people don't understand Amen. that there's something Amen. going on inside of you. Amen. God is going to bring these people out. Yes, He is. And see, in favor, could, it could have been the easy way or the hard way. Yeah. But you and I got to understand, we're going to have, remember, you go all the way back there in Deuteronomy chapter 2. 24, begin to contend with them in battle. Yes. Amen. To bring people out of bondage, it's going to take some warfare. Yes. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take, going to take some prayer. It's yes. going to take some work. It's going to take some preaching. It's going to take some money. Yeah. It's going to take some patience. It's going to take some anointing. And that's that's what God is doing. He's raising up a people, and that's what we have to understand. He's building a church that gets their hell not prevented. And the people He chose to bring out were people in slavery and the bondage. Which is a picture of people in bondage and slavery to their sin. When the lust devil talks, they listen. When the drug when the alcohol devil talks, they, they obey. When the drug devil talks, they obey. When the rebellion devil uh, the violent devils uh, talk, they, they became violent. So there's different things that happen. So God's going to bring these people out, and God's going to have a people for Himself. Amen. But people that He began with, not people that other people were chosen to begin His army. God called them His army. Mm. Because He sees the potentiality of the anointing within each and every one of us. <coughs> if, yes. if we don't understand that, see, plague after plague, all these different things and, and that, that are happening, you and I got to understand, we're going to have to show some patience and some consistency yes. in this. And we're going to have to understand, not everybody comes out of bondage in the first five minutes that we That's pray right. for them. Okay? Mm. There's going to be some things that are going to have to happen. And you will see some plagues and you'll see some consequences in some people's lives. Yes. And it's the mercy of God because yeah. He could have let them go to hell. That's they right. could have been. They could die and go to hell. But your prayers are keeping them. Yeah. You, your prayers yes. are keeping them alive. Amen. And Amen. There may be a better, yes. better a plague or a consequence than hell. Yeah. Yeah. You got to see the love of God, the mercy of God in that. Yes. See, that's what. That's true. The, you're going to see people put themselves through so much trouble. Yes. Yeah. So much Honestly. trouble. And you realize that their sin has separated them yes. from God. And they're causing themselves a whole lot of trouble. And God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And God's ways yes. are higher than our ways. Amen. Amen. And God is looking. He's looking for a deliverer. He's looking for Moses is a prophet. This, this is my definition. And the prophet, prophets in the Old Testament represent the spiritual authority as a type of as a type of the prophetic church that that when people need the word they come to Moses and now people need a word they need a they need a prophetic church to be able to come to when they need a word that God could speak to the seer, God could speak to the deliverer and, and the deliverer could bring them out of. But every deliverer needs to understand we're just not going to say let my people go and hell itself loose everybody and has control of them. Come on, say that. Right. And what I'm saying, sometimes, sometimes you and I got to get in position, we got to stay in position and not believe what we see with our eyes because do not give your circumstances the power to discourage you. You come along here and look at Moses' ministry here from time to time. Look at Joseph in the pit. Look at Joseph in jail. Look at Joseph in prison. Look at uh, Look at Joseph sold out by his brother. Look at Joseph being betrayed. Look at look at Jeremiah uh, in the miry pit, full down in there. Look at the different people that have been rejected by God. Mm -hmm. I'm not by God, but by, by, uh, by the, by the enemy people. and different things. And so hard times came to them. Okay. Okay. So the the uh, the next plague is hail. Hailstorm. Now, verse twenty-seven in chapter nine. You go see the third compromise. Pharaoh sent, and this is a real sneaky, slimy <laughs> one right here. Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron, and said to them, I have sinned. <laughs> I have sinned this time, and the Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Pray to the Lord for me, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunder, thunderings, no more hail, 
If you stop the hail, I'll let you go. If you stop this, I'll let you go, Pharaoh says. You won't have to stay here any longer. Moses said to him, I love this. Moses said to Pharaoh, as soon as I'm gone out of the city, I'll spread my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder, thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hail, that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know you don't fear God, Amen. and I know you're not going to let the people go. There was a knowing by the Spirit. Now, when you come to the place of maturity, I, I had to learn. It took me a long time. I had to learn. Do not ever listen to what someone says with their mouth. Listen to what they say with their life. Amen. And there's a knowing. Someone can say the right thing with their mouth, but they're saying the wrong thing with their life. And Moses discerns and says, I'll pray, the thunder will stop, the hail will stop, but you will not let the people go. Right. He knows by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, and verse 33, Moses went out and prayed, and the thunder stopped, and the hail stopped. Verse 34, when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail thunder were seen, he, he sinned even more, and he hardened his heart, <laughs> he and his servants, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken by Moses. Okay. Now Moses, the servant, he knew, right? Okay, now, here's the compromise that Satan's trying to use against him. He's trying to make it, see, he tries to elevate and give him hope. <laughs> Uh, in, in other words, blow your balloon up full of air. Take on a sail now, and then let that air out of your balloon. Yes. See, he's trying to give you hope and then mm. take it away. Yes. He's trying to get us to a place of being weary. Of well doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> mm -hmm. You know, this is it. Just isn't working real well. I'm doing all this, and it just seems like we're going nowhere. All kind of problems going on. Just can't. What's wrong? I just... And there'll be a temptation to become weary of well-doing and quitting and throwing the towel. Oh, yes. Okay, now, here's a, this. We're really getting to the nitty-gritty now. In chapter 10, verse 8, the fourth compromise. Okay, so all kinds of stuff are going on so that Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God, who do you want to go with you? And Moses said, We will go with our young, we will go with our old, we will go with the sons, we will go with the daughters, we will go with the flocks, we will go with the herd, we will go, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. Now, here's what he's saying. Moses said, The men going, the wives are going, the sons are going, the daughters are going, the, the herds are going, the, the cattle are going, the flocks are going, we're all going. Nothing stayed behind. Now, Listen to Fable's compromise. And you will see this when you can see this operating upon planet Earth today in the church. You'll see this. Satan using this. Okay, so Moses tells them in verse 9 who will go, we're all going to go. And verse 10, and Pharaoh said to them, let the Lord be so with you. I'll let you go. And your, as far as your little ones, there's evil before you. So here's basically what he said, verse 11. Now go... Go now, you that are men, and serve the Lord. Here's what he's saying. Okay. Here's the compromise he offers. The men can go, but the wife cannot go. Your sons cannot go. Your daughters cannot go. Your herds cannot go. Your flocks cannot go. Now, you will be given an opportunity to compromise. God had told Moses, you will go, the men will go, the wives will go, the sons will go, the daughters will go, the cattle will go, the flock. Now when you understand, here, here's, here's, what the, here's what the cattle and here's what the flocks mean because they're farmers. Your financial prosperity is going to go with you. Okay, You're not going to be in, in, in poverty. So our flocks are going to go, our herds are going to go, our wives are going to go, the sons are going to go, the daughters are going to go. Now, here's what we don't want to do, see. What Moses is saying, we're not going to leave these people behind in the world. Mm -hmm. When we go, they're all going. But you need to understand now. When I, when I went to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8, 
going to possess the land that I have given you. If you don't understand the land that has been given is not automatically yours without a battle. Amen. There are enemies, there are ites in that land. And we there are some certain things we got to bind, we got to lose, we got to defeat. Amen. Amen. And everybody will give will be given an opportunity. <clears throat> see how much ground do you want to take? If I heard anything tonight, I heard that the Spirit of God was pleading to, uh, to us, enter into your full inheritance. I Amen. have so much for more you. for you. Yes. 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 And you need to fight the fight yes. of faith. This is by faith. Because there's Amen. a fullness. And whenever we settle for, well, you know, I figure if I keep the bucket, I'm saved, I'll go to heaven. But I still don't get my inheritance. And I'm not taking other people along with me. Mm -hmm. There's a fight that has to be fought, Saint yeah. God. That's pulling them out of the fire. We have to be willing yeah. to contend. You have to understand, because there's different things that would block, that would distract. And, and John Romero says this very often. Remember how he would bind and break the spirit of delay. Yeah. Yes. The spirit of delay. I've never heard anyone ever say mm -hmm. the spirit of delay. And he would bind it, he would break the spirit of delay. Satan wants us to be weary of well doing yep. so that we compromise, we, we faint rather than fight. See, there's a temptation that it's so seducing, we become passive, but we don't call it passive, we call it maturity. <laughs> I'm mature now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mature. Passive rather than passionate. In uh, Acts chapter 3, come to the temple, the man lame, got his little tin cup begging. Yeah. When he got healed, he came into the house walking, leaping, and leaping, and praising God. And praising God. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, if we see someone come into the church like that, you know, every, every time, I'll, 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 be, I'll be up here, and we'll be in priest service prayer, and I'll say, somebody ran, somebody, I saw someone running, <laughs> look at those, the window blinds are open, and I, somebody is running, and they're running to get into the house of God because they're so hungry. hungry. Amen. They're so thirsty. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm saying is if we become passive and we lose the fire, the zeal, the hunger, the thirst, the fight, and we're not contending, we don't have vision for new land, new taking new mm -hmm. taking new ground. We come, but there's no what happened to the spirit of expectation? Yes. What happened to the hop in our step? What happened to the walking, the leaping, the praising God? What happened? See, and we, and beside being able to lie to yourself, I, I, I just turned out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Be compassionate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Satan will offer compromise. See, here's what Satan knows. Satan then is saying, without putting in these words, our men then. Your men can go, but your women and your children will stay. Yeah. Now our men will have sex with your women, right. wow. and we'll create a new, gener new right. generation, and we will rebuild. Oh, no. So we need to get something from God that is so real, but so powerful, so authoritative, yes. Yes. that people in our house want it. Yes. It's hard to resist love. Yes. <laughs> You'd be so alive. Amen. So powerful. See that we come here and we come here to get something to take home. And we'll if we have until we get something that's so powerful it affects me at home, it affects me upon my job, it affects me at the school, it affects me in the marketplace, it affects me everywhere that I go, then yes. I'm so alive. Yes. Mm. 
then what happens is you really God stops higher than my thoughts. And when God points the higher my, my way, I want more of you, God. You are so good. Yes, I am so happy. I'm so fulfilled. That Amen. Hallelujah. I'm saved. Yes. I'm excited. I'm Amen. hungry and thirsty. Amen. This is so good. Yes. Is there, is there more? Is there more? Amen. Yes. You mean there's more? more? Yes. There's more? Yes. Oh my God, there's more? <laughs> Now I'm excited that oh, there's more. Yes. There's more than just being saved yes, by the sin of our teeth. Yes. There's more. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank, you, yes. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The fifth compromise is in verse 24. Pharaoh called Moses and said, Okay, you can go. You can serve the Lord. But let your flocks and your herds stay behind. And let, you know, all right, I'll let the little ones go. And Moses said, now you think, man, we have been, I've been fighting a hard battle. Here. I've been fighting a hard battle. Now the men can go. You, first you said no one can go. Now the men can go. Then you said the women can go. Now the little ones can go. Should we leave our finances behind? What did God say? The men shall go. The women shall go. The sons will go, the daughters will go, your flocks shall go, your herds shall go. No, I'm not going to accept yourself, your compromise. Yeah. It's all. Amen. Amen. Or nothing. Yes. I, no, I, I won't accept your compromise. We're going all the way to God. Uh, we're not going to just believe in salvation. We're, we're going to talk in tongues. Amen. We're not going to just believe in salvation. We're going to believe in the gifts. Amen. We're going to believe in healing. We're going to believe in prophecy. Amen. We're going to believe in the Bible. We're going to believe in all that God has. Amen. Take that song away. What's it going to be? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our cattle shall go with it. Amen. And there shall not be a single hoof left behind. Amen. Therefore, must we, 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 we need to take our lives and our hearts to serve the Lord our God. We know not with what we must serve until we get there. Yes. They will harden his heart again. So now we're getting that chapter 12. And the chapter 12 is, is the curse, the, the plague of the death of the firstborn. Which, see, Pharaoh brought upon the people that he had been called to be leader over. And we pick up the story in verse 29. Okay. It came to pass at midnight that the Lord spoke the firstborn of the land of Egypt, the firstborn of Pharaoh, and that sat upon the throne to the firstborn of the captain that was in the dungeon, and the firstborn of the cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all of his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, and there was not a single house or that there wasn't a person dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night, Rise up and get ye forth from among the people, both you and the children of Israel. Go and serve the Lord. And this is very important. Go and serve the Lord as you had said. Amen. Go and serve the Lord as you had said. See, Satan tried to dictate and control and manipulate how they would have a ritual. Amen. No. So then that spirit is finally broken. Amen. And now Pharaoh saying, now you can go serve the Lord as you had said. Amen. What did Moses say? He said what God had said. Amen. Yes. You shall go three day journey. You shall go, the men shall go, the wife shall go, the son shall go, the daughter shall go, the herd shall go, the flock shall go. Amen. We're all going, and Amen. not one hoop shall Amen. be left behind. Amen. Amen. So now Pharaoh said, you shall go Amen. as you have said. Amen. See, you and I have authority. Amen. How much do you want? Oh, hallelujah. All you will be given an opportunity to compromise and serve for less. Yes. Yes. Uh, Hallelujah. Pharaoh, type of Satan, now saying, Go and serve the Lord as you have said. Also, take your flocks, take your herds as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people, Get these people out of here. Get them out of here, for we all die. People took their dough before it was leavened, and the kneading, kneading troughs being bound in the clothes of the shoulders, and the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed, which means the ass they requested. They inquired, they obtained of the Egyptian jewels of silver, and jewels of gold, and raiment, 
which is a prophetic picture that the wealth of the wicked is transferred to the righteous, mm -hmm. and, and they don't know it yet, but they're not going to need any money here a little bit. And God did the people favor the sight of the Egyptians so that they led it to them and they spoiled the Egyptians. Amen. Okay, so very important what happens next. And, and what we got to do, we got to get this. If you're not going through this, you may know someone who's going through certain circumstances, situations. And this is why it's very important that you and I keep ourselves alive so we can be part of the answer for people that's going through basic problems. If you, if you want to know what ministry is, it's solving problems. That's right. It just, if you want to know how to counsel, it's this simple. Define the problem and find the biblical answer. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you don't need years of counseling. No. Just find the problem yes. and bring the biblical answer. Amen. There, there, there it is. That's, right. that's just... just Define the real problem. Don't listen to the lie. Find out the real problem Amen. here. And then just bring the answer, okay? Amen. So then, this this is an important part. Because remember, the thief comes, but the steal, kill, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Chapter 14. Well, at the end of verse chapter 13, the Lord went before them. Now they're coming out. They've been released. Uh, God breaks the fire. They come out. And the Lord went before them in the pillar of cloud to lead them by the, by the way, uh, and by night a pillar of fire to give them light to go by, by night. And he took down the pillar of the cloud by day to the pillar of fire by night. So we're talking about cloud by day and fire by night. It was hot in the desert in the summertime. Okay. It was hot in the desert, so they put a cloud over it so it wouldn't be too hot, and then there would be a pillar of fire at night to give them light and to give them warmth because they got cool in the desert. Now, here they are, and they're camped by the Red Sea. Now, remember, Pharaoh, a type of Satan, has said, I'll let you go as you had said. Because God had spoken to Moses. Okay, so now, in verse 5 of chapter 14, And was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? Why have we let Israel go from serving us? Now really ponder this, say to God, because you're going to see this happen. You're going to see people come to the altar and they're going to pray the sinner's prayer. And many times, if you don't have experience, you will assume all, everybody will live happily ever after. But that not necessarily so. Because here they are, Pharaoh, type of Satan, has let them go. And now... Here they are, camped by the Red Sea. Now they're going. The, the Red Sea is a type of water baptism. It's a type of separation. And what Satan then does? Why have we let Israel go from serving us? When the powers of darkness begin to discern, it's losing control of you. Once they begin, begin to pursue you. You're going to see people come to the altar. That when they're here, the light of God will shine. They'll hear, and they were respond to come to the altar. When they're here, they want this. Mm. But when they go back out there, they're going to hear other voices. Mm. And the enemy out there will begin to war to them. Why have we let Israel, why, why did we let fill, fill in the name, put whatever name. Why did we let, we got to stop them. So Pharaoh then, Pharaoh, type of Satan, he gets 600 choice chariots which to me is, is a type of ruling spirits. And I missed this for years. I read, I read it another time. 600 choice chariots and every other chariot in Egypt. In other words, Satan gets every cohort, every demon, every demonic power he can to come after Israel that's camped by the Red Sea to bring them right back in the same bondage that yeah. God had just brought them out of. Yeah. You, and I have to understand because someone comes to the altar, because someone comes to church and gets it touched, that does not mean they're going to live happily ever after right. for God. Amen. That there is a warfare. Yes. Yes. Now, really ponder this, saints, because this is real. Or else it could create unbelief in you. Yes. Think of all the warfare to get them out of Egypt. Mm. 
and all the warfare to get that out of Egypt, a type of the world, to break the power of Pharaoh, the type, a type of Satan, and when they get released, and here they are, and there's a pillar of uh, fire by night and a cloud by day, and they're camped by the Red Sea, and then Pharaoh, here they are, they're camped here, and you think, oh, thank God, we're so grateful. But there's a demonic strategy to leave there, to come and get them. Why did we let Israel go from serving us? <laughs> That's true. You know, so, some of you that don't understand Here drugs, you may, you may not understand what I'm about to say. But someone who's really been in the drugs, the drug dealer will come when it, when when he loses a customer, and he hears a customer try to go straight, and the customer became a Christian. The drug dealer will come and say, "The first one's free." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's true. Wow. <laughs> this part is just a little bit. I'm going to turn you on. I'm not going to charge you for this coffee. Uh, for this Christmas. I'm not going to charge you yeah. for this yeah. Yeah. I see it. The first one is yeah. free. Same trying to get the taste back. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, change of God. The enemy will try to somebody knock on your door, somebody call you up, someone visit you, something happen to try to get you drunk, try to get you high. Try to get you back into whatever God just brought you out of. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's too, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. As you really study real Christianity, and if, in, in my opinion, if you're really honest, you will understand what the multitude is in what I call the professional religious system of a day compromise. Because there's a lot of, that's why I shared that out of Colossians. Paul said, with great conflict, mm -hmm. we labored over you. There was warfare. Yes. We had to fight the fight of faith. I had I had to get in the word for myself to keep my own head above water. Amen. Let alone that. Yeah. The only way I could help other people, I could keep my own head above yeah. water so yeah. I could help other people keep their head above water. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, in real Christianity, not every day is going to be a picnic. Mm -hmm. There's some hard dates. That's right. See, when you, you came by the Red Sea, oh, well, thank God, we got, we got it made now. All of a sudden, you hear noise. Yeah. Yeah. It's not thunder. It's the horsemen. It's the chariots coming to pull you right back out of the same bondage that, you, that God Almighty just brought you out of. This one I used to, I won't go there. Satan with six hundred choice chariots and every every other chariot in Egypt comes back to bring the God brings God people right back. The people became afraid. Now this is what God's looking for. It may be it may be between you and another person, maybe maybe someone in your family, maybe someone in your crowd, the people you hang with, someone in your job, someone in your school, someone in your family, someone in their church, someone in your city, someone in your, in your nation, but the people that you hang with, they're gonna they're gonna be people They'll become afraid and begin to meet mouth to deliver how come you brought us out of here to die. You should have just left us alone. But there's a, there is there is a in the church. This is what God's looking for, and He has some right here in this church. Right here in this church, when everybody, when when the multitude becomes afraid, and willing to tuck their tail and go back to Egypt, and willing to surrender, God is looking for someone. Moses said, "Fear ye not." He said, "God's looking for people and deliver." There's a bring the church. There's a people. We have heard this. Wednesday night, we heard this tonight. God is raising up a church that the gates of hell will not prevail against. Isaiah 48 10 says, I've chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Yes. Yes. We prayed that we played that song. <laughs> One of the mosquito lands on me. <laughs> Do I become offended for the town? No. And what I'm saying is, gonna pray more. there's going to be a multitude. The world and religion will become afraid. Yes. 
And if you understand that you've been called to be part of the remnant, then here's what God's looking for. That when the multitude wants to tuck tail, when the multitude becomes afraid, when the multitude wants to wave up, wants to put the white, white flag and surrender, there will be a Moses, there will be a deliverer, there will be a Amen. remnant church. <laughs> yes. There will be a church within the church yes. that will make a proclamation. Fear ye not. Fear Amen. ye not and stand still. For Amen. today you shall see the salvation yeah. of the Lord. And he spoke for the right of God, which is the type of the word of God. And he spoke to the Red Sea and it parted. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. So when something so comes against me and you become weary, no one's talking down to anybody. That's right. Let me put it this way. Oh, hallelujah. It's real. It's real. If you've ever gone through circumcision yourself, you will not look down on other people that's going yeah. through circumcision mm -hmm. because you know the pain. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's crossed for the most part, the backside of the desert will not look down upon someone else that's going through the backside of the desert because they understand the backside of the desert. They understand the preparation. They understand the process. They understand that not every day is going to be hunky dory. Right. On your journey, there'll be some bad days. Yes. There'll be some hard days. There'll be yeah. some difficult yeah. days. Yeah. I'm going to say this again. Look at Jeremiah yeah. in the pit. Yeah. Look at Joseph in the pit. Yes. Look at Paul the Apostle in, in jail. Yes. Mm. There's some tough, hard days there. Yes. The question will be, will the remnant have enough love to love God and love people and Amen. not retreat? Amen. Not retreat yeah. to being in church. That's right. But loving self, Amen. loving pleasures, mm. loving the world, loving comfort, more than being lovers of God. Amen. In the last days, perilous and difficult times are coming, shall be lovers of themselves. Yes. Yeah. And lovers of pleasures, more than being lovers of God. Yes. See, someone can love God this much. I love God. Yeah. But love himself. Yes. Yes. Love the world. Yeah. Wrong priorities. Yes. What is God looking for? He's looking for someone that will be able to stretch forth the rod of God. Remember mm -hmm. the being led by the, the cloud by day and the fire by night. Fire by night. And God gave them victory. Okay, uh, Let's do this. We'll play a song. The song is, I will trust in you. Um, I don't, I don't know. That's it. Me too. And I think yes. that, I think that, I think that sometimes, I think an aspect of faith is just keeping your own head above and water yeah, yourself yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Peter, a great apostle, he got the boat one time, walk out of water, and then he began the same. Mm. He wasn't rejected by God. He got his eyes back upon Jesus. Yes. So I'm going to play this song, and then we're going to just wait upon the Lord. And then we'll we'll see we're gonna go wait upon the Lord, let the Holy Spirit get the altar call. But this so let's play this song. See if this has some to you and if you want to skip this